Vanguard Group, BlackRock, and State Street all bought more IonQ over this past quarter. So the three largest asset managers in the world are buying IonQ. I'll go into a reason why I think that's happening. And then over this video, I will go into the stocks chart and give a price prediction as well. And then I will also go through the short interest and some recent notes you need to be thinking about when you're considering the stock. So let's just talk about this one by one. So the Vanguard Group, which is the top shareholder for this company, increased their holdings by 15% and now owns 17 million shares. So this is all figured out through a 13F update. Basically, for those that don't know, once a quarter, every large asset manager has to disclose its holdings and that happened earlier in august about mid-august and we can see here that blackrock also increased their holdings by 30 percent and they now own 11.2 million shares state street increased their holdings by 32 percent as well so this is big because these three asset managers are the largest in the entire world so it's good to see that that kind of the big boys are buying in on the stock and shares have been up too so i i don't want to say say that, that this is you know the typical reason that passive indexers buy more stock is usually when shares go down to kind of right size their holdings but in this scenario they're buying more as prices go up so that's an active choice right that's that's not the same as you know buying um as the prices go down to just to right size your holdings right so this is this is definitely different um and is a really good sign for the stock so in terms of other notable buyers and sellers we also saw two sigma investments increase their holdings by seven i mean by 170 percent that's a big uh, hedge fund they are so good to see there um, and then we can also see that bank of america increased their holdings by 350 percent as well de shaw which is one of the biggest hedge funds in the world also increased their holdings by eight thousand percent they own about 1.4 million shares so the largest asset managers in the world are buying more ion q great sign because they're doing it as prices are going up which tells you that they're not kind of dip buying to right size their portfolios and what i mean by right size your portfolio is let's say you own one percent of your portfolio in ion q and prices drop 50 percent now you only own a half percent of your portfolio in ion q typically right sizing what i mean by that is you would then double your 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 shares double your holdings to go back up to that one percent weight so that's kind of what i mean by right sizing it's not happening here though as i said because prices are moving up and they're still buying so that that is awesome to see for ion q shareholders are definitely um, very interested in the stock at this point in time and then i'll cover this recent deal a little stale here um, but I, I i it is such an important news i did want to at least touch on it so um IonQ str struck a deal with Boston-based Zapata AI to use generative AI on quantum hardware to learn um, new advantages for quantum computing. The deal expands a previous collaboration between the pair, which had focused on generative AI. IonQ's commercial success is a reflection of the value that our customers are that our customers uh, attribute to our systems yet the on-ramp into quantum computing can be challenging our partnership with zabata will remove roadblocks and accelerate quantum adoption that was from their uh, chief revenue officer and so the company also boosted its bookings forecast for the full year as it now sees bookings between 49 and 56 million up from the previous range of 45 to 55 and then they also raised their revenue forecast um, to between about 19 million to 19.3 million which is up from their prior estimates so they're raising their estimates that they're, they're raising their guidance in reaction to this deal which is awesome awesome to see right and then i want to make a quick note here just on the size of the quantum computing market so this is from statista here this shows me that um the size of the quantum computing market in 2020 was only a half a billion dollars but by 2027 this is projected to be 8.6 billion dollars that's a massive jump that shows you that this um 
industry is becoming more and more important. More investable capital is kind of flowing into this industry, which is obviously a positive for IonQ in the broader quantum computing industry. And then quickly here, I want to go over the short interest for the stock. So we can see here that 15% of the float is sold short. And that actually was an increase we saw. So um, last week, we got we got a short interest update. For those that don't know, we get a short interest update twice a month, mid-month and end of month. Um, so shorts actually increased their holdings, their, their, their short positions by 13% over over the short interest period, over two weeks. Um, so it is interesting to kind of see that short sellers are still kind of coming into the stock, which we, do, we don't love to see, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just more ammo for a short squeeze, right? So that that, that would be awesome. Uh, and then days to cover is 1.8, which for those that don't know, basically tells you that it would take 1.8 days of average volume to cover the shares that are sold short. Typically, we look for a days to cover number of over 10 to signify a short squeeze. So not really a high likelihood of a short squeeze in this stock. Just thought it was interesting that over the past two weeks, shorts had actually increased their positions by 13%. Thought that was kind of notable. Um, and then let's take a look at the chart. Let's, let's take a look at the chart and see if we can give a logical price prediction based on technical analysis. So we can see that we're, we're hanging in with that $15 support level. We call this level support as this is where shares had topped out in March of 2022. It's also where shares had bottomed in December of 2021. I call the support based on, a, on a, uh, a future top because past resistance becomes new support. Obviously, we, we, did, we did break that level briefly for a couple days here in late August, but then we recently reclaimed it. I would say more significantly, though, is that we, we held this 50-day moving average, which we have been trading above basically since April, although we did have two days where we, we traded below that in mid-April, I mean, in mid-August, excuse me. Um, so, but then we had three separate trading days where we used the 50-day moving average as support. That was on the 24th, the 25th, and the 28th of August. Um, so now that we're back above that that daily moving average, that 50-day moving average, which is a very crucial day, uh, moving average as well, I do think we could see a larger move higher for the stock. We're above all daily daily moving averages as well, which is a good sign for the stock. Um, so, you know, bullish momentum for shares. We're above that support level at about $15. I think we could move up to 19 pretty quickly. I know that's kind of a small move, but this is where shares had topped out in December of 2021. So I think we can kind of top out at that level once again. But let's say we're able to kind of cross over this resistance level at 19. I do think we could see a move up to about $22 over the coming weeks if we are able to move above that resistance level at around 19 bucks, I do think that would be a quick move. And this is where shares had topped out in December of 2021. It's also where shares had topped out in November of 2021 as well. Obviously, we had that large jump up to up to $36, which definitely isn't out of the realm of, of possibility for the stock. But at this point in time, you know, I would say the safer move is that we get a move up to 19 at least. And if we're able to overtake that resistance level at 19, we see a move higher up to $22 over the coming weeks. So that is what I'm thinking about IonQ. I posted a video breaking down the stock in its entirety. So if you want a deeper breakdown of that stock, I'll, I'll show that at the end of this video. I'll, I'll show that that um, that video um, at the end of this video here. Um, so, with that being said, I think this stock has some upside. I, I think the quantum computing space is a really in interesting space, and I think investors, as you can see from the shareholder list, are increasing their exposure to this space, which is obviously a good thing for IonQ. So, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will end it there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis, so make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Happy investing.